My name is John Summerhill. I have probably made about 15 knives from start to finish. I am a high school assistant principal, so every day is an adventure. I'm ready for anything that's coming at me, and I, I look forward to trying to adapt and beat those odds. My name is Daniel Lovano. I got into bladesmithing when I went to the Renaissance Festival and realized there were guys that were still doing it. I'm here to have fun, but I'm also here to win. My name is Mike Van Oy. I'm a full-time farrier and I'm a part-time bladesmith. I'm used to dealing with the unknown because when I go to a new barn in the morning, you just never know how the horse is going to react to what you're doing. You just never know what's going to happen. All right, I hope that you're ready to spring into action. This is your first challenge. You are going to engage in the Little Spring, Big Spring Challenge. You must combine at least three small springs with a section of the large spring to forge a billet from which you will make a signature blade in your signature style. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your 10-minute design window starts now. I'm designing a mix between a camp knife and a sax. The sax is very much meant for chopping and for slicing. I started making blades not long after I started shoeing horses, mainly using old rasps or files. My design is a camp knife slash chopper with a slightly recurved blade. It'll be a heavy blade with some heft to it that'll just hold up well. My plan is to make a large camp knife. It will be thick, it'll be able to handle cutting through some hard surfaces, but at the same time, slice through something thin. I know first thing I need to do is cut off two pieces of my large coil. So Mike's just come away from the pantry with one of our canisters. I'm going to leave the can on with going through that pipe chop. I want a little bit of soft steel on the spine, and I think that'll work out good. I cleaned the metal up. I put white out in, got it in the forge, heating it up. Once I got about 15 minutes in, I'm good to go with pulling that out. Now John's taking a very hot billet over to the press. As I'm setting the welds, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't have anything falling apart. It is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. The only thing that I'm nervous about is if I can't get the canister off of the material inside. And finally, the billet falls to the ground, and I have defeated the canister. Trophy! My billet is forge welded solid into one solid piece of steel. Now I'm going to draw it out so I can establish a tang and actually forge a point into the knife. I've never done canister Damascus before. Look at that rocket that Daniel is putting into his forge right now. That's just powder on the outside of the can. The clock is ticking away, and I know it's going to take a while to make this canister Damascus. Somebody, do you think it's hot enough? I can't tell. When you think it's hot enough, wait another minute or two. <laughs> Some good advice. And now I got to go forge weld it. I start to press it together, and it just starts to fall apart. Oh my god, the entire top of the can just peeled off. At this point, I'm kind of panicking. He's just shoved that lidless coffin back into the forge. From what I know with canister Damascus, you usually want to take the canister off anyway, so one less step. If Daniel had to put any kind of flux in, in that canoe, you know, maybe he'd have a shot of getting that stuff to stick. I'm hoping to salvage something from it. Here's the hoping. They start drawing out the billet. It's looking good. Then I look a little closer, and I start to see little tiny cracks. Now I've got to make a decision at this point how I'm going to solve this issue. My first priority here is to fill those gaps so that the blade is structurally sound. If I quench and there's no cracking, I know my welds are good and solid. Michael just quenched his blade. First quenched blade. File's biting into the blade a little bit, so I know it's not completely hardened the way I'd like it to be. I hate to quench again, but I don't quite trust it. Quench the second time, and I pull it out. It does seem harder than the first time, so I think I'm good. 
John has just quenched his blade as well. I pull the blade out of the quench, and I let it cool off. I'm fairly confident at this point I've got a pretty hard blade. You got to give it to Daniel, though. He had a can that was falling apart. Somehow, he managed to get that thing welded into something that looks somewhat solid. With so much time spent on trying to get a workable billet, I need to shape my blade fast. 10 minutes! I'm playing a, a dangerous game of cat and mouse with the clock. I need to go heat treat it. I'm only going to get one shot at this quench. I have no room for error. There he goes, it Daniel in, in the quench. In. It in. I don't have time to file check it. I don't have time to clean it up. I still have to etch it. Five, four, three, two, one. This first round of competition is over. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You've made it to round two. And now that those blades have been tempered, it's time to turn them into fully functioning knives by attaching handles to them. Good luck. Your three hour starts now. My first priority is to cut the tang down. What I need to do is cut off an inch within the last third of the tang, because I want there to be a swell so that the knife won't slip out of your hands. Well, right now I'm getting a little frustrated because I can't drill through my tang. So I'm going to sharpen the bit and see if that works. I was in a really good spot, but this is kind of putting me behind. There There's a hole. I just shorten my handle, and then I got to get over and make a mosaic pin that I've never done before in my life. John's putting a lot of his weight into this drill press. As soon as you bear into a tungsten carbide bit, it just shatters. I look and see that there's a little tiny hole sticking through. The carbide bit started through the other side. So I grab a chisel, and I start tapping on that carbide bit, and luckily, it comes out. Now I'm back in business. Daniel went down a rabbit hole trying to make a hidden tang design. This is going to be a mad fun. dash for Daniel, man. I wasted a ton of time trying to do this burn through when I could have just started with two pieces of wood from the get go. Moving on to placing the pins in. And before you know it, I'm working on the sides of the scales, um, thinning them out and putting a good texture in. Uh, the more I'm grinding, the more I'm seeing that my handle scale isn't tight against my tang. The last thing I need is for one of the handle scales to pop off during testing. So I'm going to have to fill this in with some epoxy. This time I used a thin wire that I used out of for my mosaic pin to sort of push the epoxy down into the cracks. Ten minutes, bladesmiths! Everything, absolutely everything, has taken me much longer than it should have. The biggest concern right now is getting all the parameters in. I'm running out of time. He hasn't sharpened his blade, and his handle is just incomplete all the way around. Yeah, it's glued up. 36 grit it, man. He's got a pretty aggressive belt, but it's not a new belt. No, it's the same belt he's had the entire world. time. Yeah. The pressure's on. The glue isn't fully set. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bladesmith, stop what you're doing. Drop your tools. Pull your blade out of that acid edge. <laughs> this second round of competition is over. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction of your knives, I'm going to attempt to crush these copper pipes. Mike, you're up. You ready? I was born ready. Well, Mike. Your edge held up beautifully. There's no deformation of any kind. The only real issue I had with it is that the handle is a little round, and that did make it twist in my hand on one of the strikes. I, I had to double down and, and grab a little bit tighter. But well done. Thank you. John, you're up next. Let's do it.
John, your edge held up beautifully. The only way I would know that this actually ever even hit a copper pipe is the, the smear of copper on the, on the sides. It's light, it's fast, it's fun to swing. Nice job. Thank you. Daniel, you're up. How are you feeling? Discouraged. Discouraged. <laughs> my biggest concern here is my handle staying on. The tang is too small, and I just did not get enough resin on the inside. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought. Well, Daniel, th this hardly qualifies to honestly be a knife. The handle is essentially a block of wood. I mean, it, it's not really even glued at this end. Unfortunately, in its current state, it's, it's not safe to test. Daniel, we commend any smith that walks through those doors and puts their skills to the test in this forge, and you've proven yourself to be a tenacious competitor. However, tenacity wasn't enough today, and I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I'm really disappointed that I'm not gonna see my knife tested, but I completely understand. Without a good handle, a blade is just a paperweight. I'm going home, got my head held high. You live and learn another day.